All right, should you do cardio? Cardiovascular training has been around since the dawn of man, obviously, in some fashion or another. When we once were hunter-gatherers, cardio was woven into our lives as a necessity. Running for predators, defending our homes, and just pure survival gave man the built-in benefits of cardio without ever having to set aside time to exercise. Nowadays, with technology advancing at an alarming rate, lives becoming more hectic, and obesity climbing worldwide, many look to cardio to lose weight, and lead healthier lives. But is cardio all it's cracked up to be? Is it the savior we tend to think it is? Let's break a few things down and get to the truth about cardio training. The benefits, the downsides, and if it's right for you. Is cardio necessary? There have been countless studies studying the fact that cardiovascular or aerobic training is beneficial within the medical community. For example, a 2011 study in the Journal of Research and Rehabilitation Sciences found that part of a comprehensive plan including cardiac risk factors, modification and education, among other factors, patients reduced cardiovascular mortality. In other words, individuals became successful when aerobic training was part of their routine. Moreover, a study published in the Physician and Sports Medicine Journal in 2015 concluded patients who are active at an early age and who continue to enjoy active lifestyles as adults will attenuate the normal losses in cardiovascular endurance, strength, and flexibility that accompany aging and sedentary living, thereby maintaining greater independence throughout their lifespan. So we've established cardio is necessary for many uses regarding health and mortality, but what about burning fat? Will cardio burn fat? For decades, many have believed cardio training was the best and most efficient way to burn fat and to lean up. But is this true? Is it still number one or are we missing something? Let's look at the science. A study in the Journal of Applied Physiology wanted to find how aerobic and or resistance training affected body mass and fat mass in overweight or obese adults. After extensive analysis, it was concluded that aerobic training alone was the optimal mode of exercise for reducing body fat. These findings may be due to the fact that at low intensities, the body will utilize fat for fuel more efficiently than carbohydrates. High intensity weight training conversely will use readily available sugars in the bloodstream and liver for fuel. In fact, a study was done in a group of dieting obese participants on the effects of strength training or aerobic training on body composition, resting metabolic rate, and peak oxygen consumption. Specifically, the strength training group lost the least amount of fat-free mass, but along with aerobic training group, did not prevent the decline in resting metabolic rate. So what is cardio good for? Many t will tend to villainize cardio training as some sort of medieval form of ineffective exercise. Overhyped and overutilized. But aside from the obvious and well-documented positive effects on heart disease, certain types of cancer, and overall well-being, there is another less known positive effect of cardio training. As a pleasantly surprising side effect, a study from the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine sought to find out that due to many changing levels of hormones, namely ghrelin and leptin, that aerobic training decreases appetite by manipulating hunger. Simply put, exercise makes you less hungry, making you eat less overall calories. Benefits of cardio. So aside from the health benefits and appetite suppression, what are some other benefits of cardio? Well, it maintains healthy blood pressure. Studies have repeatedly shown that cardiovascular exercise can reduce high blood pressure to that of healthy levels. Lower blood pressure not only means longevity, but also less strain on your circulatory system and better recovery between workouts. Well, it boosts brain function as well. As we age, we tend to lose cognitive function and brain tissue. This decline also signifies a loss in mental performance. Cardiovascular training, however, has been shown to reduce the decline in brain tissue in older adults as shown from a 2003 study citing significant differences compared to a control group. Well, it protects your immune system as well. Moderate exercise can improve immune system by increasing the number of immunoglobulins produced from white blood cells. These molecules are your main defense for combating bacteria and viruses and fortify your system for overall health benefits. It's easily accessible. Cardio training is relatively free and easy to put into practice. Walking, running, and interval training can be done virtually anywhere, but Biking only requires a small investment as well as swimming. Nearly every gym has cardio equipment and some even have specialized areas for things such as boxing. It's easy to modify. If running sprints isn't your thing, take up jogging. If jogging isn't your bag, then go for a walk. The great thing about cardio is that much like resistance training, you can easily modify it to your needs and abilities. Everything from speed intervals, complexity, and duration are managed by you and you alone. 
All right, the downsides of cardio. Of course, anything good does have a downside. Too much of anything can have reverse effects on not only your body, but your overall mental state as well. If you're nursing any injury or minor tear in your knees, hips, or ankles, cardio exercise such as running will only make things worse. If it hurts, don't do it. And don't feel like you need to just get through it. Manning up and running through pain will eventually land you on the operating table. There is a possibility that you may not be built for certain forms of cardio. Running, for example, may not be the best choice for a 250 pound bodybuilder. They may need something a little more low impact, such as biking or brisk walking. The same applies if you're the type who needs to lose a significant amount of body fat. Too much weight bearing impact will eventually lead to injury. Too much cardio can lead to boredom as well. A cardio plan without a set goal and parameters will only make it feel twice as long and twice as difficult. Have a plan for intensity, duration, variation, and take measurements such as target heart rate and rate your perceived exertion on a scale of one to 10. Try hitting a five or more. Types of cardio. There are many types of cardio training modes to choose from, but here we'll keep things simple and familiar. LISS. LISS stands for low intensity steady state. This is a form of cardio that you're most likely familiar with. A long walk, a low intensity jog, bike ride, elliptical trainer, or relatively easy swim would fit into this category. Here you're keeping the intensity of a relatively easy and moderate level pacing yourself for a medium to lengthy duration of exercise. These sessions may be from 20 minutes to a full hour or more. The goal is to utilize fat for fuel due to the lower intensity level. HITT, HITT or HIT stands for high intensity interval training. You may also have heard of this type of cardio being popularized by those who favor cross training or are pressed for time or simply want something different to do other than the long steady state stuff. Here you intermittently perform short bouts of high intensity exercise followed by longer bouts of lower intensity. This pattern is repeated several times for a shorter duration than lists. The theory goes that more fat is burned for several hours post exercise, but studies have been inconclusive regarding this notion. So how to add cardio to your life. There's a ton of back and forth when it comes to when to do cardio, specifically, if you should do it before or after your weight training workouts, or if you should just leave it for the end of your own day. There's a ton of research to validate many viewpoints, but here I want to keep things simple and give some practical advice. If you decide to do cardio on a training day, a good rule of thumb to follow is to perform it after your weight workout. The reason being is to reserve most of your short term energy for weights so you can perform at your best. You'll be fresh and full of energy to hit the weights while firing at all cylinders. With this approach, it's safe to perform lists if you have the time or hit if you're a bit more crunch for time after the weight training. If you decide for any reason to perform cardio before your weight training, it's best to go with lists since it will expend fewer essential carbs, which you'll need for training afterwards. Which type of cardio is better? Again, much research has been done to differentiate the effects of both types of cardio. All of the nuance will only frustrate you to no end, relegating you to indecision. The best approach to is to consider your tolerance level, time available, and mood for the day. You don't want your cardio sessions to turn into something you dread. And if you're an endurance athlete or a recreational runner, you want to increase your performance, then you may be in need of a more specific cardio training program. Bottom line is to vary the types of cardio you do and make it fit into your current lifestyle and schedule. In closing, whether your goal is fat loss, better cardiovascular health, improving your lung capacity, cardio is a rather simple concept and one in which you'll reap many benefits from. It's wise to make it a part of any workout to help you build a more holistic approach to health and well-being. If you want to build your best body ever, try the Alpha program. If you enjoyed this video and you got benefit from it, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you soon.